probably get this question a lot, other missionaries get this a lot, when they have a successful career and they leave it, or like could have a very successful career and they leave it to go fundraise their salary and be with college students, uh -huh. um, like why? Well, I, I believe very strongly in the faith and its truth and that the message of evangelization isn't just something that happened 2,000 years ago. And I've thought a lot about past, past generations and the worlds that they came up in. And I think that for people like my parents, who thanks be to God that I have the parents that I do, they came into a world that was not so clearly broken in the ways that we see it now and how everyone is behaving and how everything is. And those signs are obvious enough that I couldn't look away from them. Mm -hmm. And while I think that for people like my parents and their generation, they saw their, their obligation very clearly as Christians to be good members of society and to raise good members of society. Mm -hmm. But the reality now is that Christian civilization is dead and it's been dead for a long time and the cracks weren't as obvious then as they are now, but, but they are now. Yeah. And so some people have to be willing to set aside what they would prefer to do to do what they should do. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that I'm some great hero for being a focused missionary. Truthfully, it was a selfish, selfish decision for me to make because I, I wanted to do it so badly. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what anyone else in particular is supposed to do, but I see the need <laughs> and I have the, the capacity and the desire to serve the Lord in that way. I said yes to becoming a focused missionary uh, for a few different reasons, but uh, the one that's coming to my mind right now is I went on a mission trip to Calcutta, India for about a month between my junior and my senior year, and I was dead set on going to PA school, had the grades, had my hours, was moving forward in that direction, and uh, went to Calcutta to really uh, physically heal a lot of people, and I found myself there. Uh, and I'm walking the streets of Calcutta and my heart is breaking as I'm seeing um, yeah not to be crass but just dying people on the streets as I'm walking over to the houses every day uh, and just recognizing their longing their longing for love and attention and I don't know why in looking at them I was just thinking of all my friends like on their phones like not just glossing over, I'm walking through campus and, and they're not paying attention to anything and how much they're longing, but just don't have the words to say. Like I'm dying for a little love. Uh, and this particular moment of my, it was on my birthday, my 21st birthday. Um, and I went to the house of uh, just like in, badly wounded and injured and dying uh, that Mother Teresa really established there. And they brought in this woman that uh, basically her husband had taken acid and thrown it onto her and over her face. Um, and they wanted someone that wouldn't be freaked out by what was happening so that they could help treat her. So they brought her into my lap and I'm holding her as they're starting to treat her. And I just thought this must be the most poor woman I've ever met in my entire life. And then as soon as I look into her eyes, I remembered my friend uh, that I'll call Susie uh, that I met my freshman year as she's confessing and telling me uh, in a casual way. I say it's confessing, but she just was casual about saying, yeah, um, I'm, I'm going off tonight and I'm hooking up with some guy. I'm like, oh, who's the guy? And she's like, oh, I don't know. I'll just find a guy tonight to hook up with. And I was like, oh, like, do you usually do this? Just trying to ask good questions. And she's like, oh yeah, I've, I, I've done this a ton. And I was like, you sleep with them and she's like oh yeah I, I just need to have sex all the time and I was like so this guy like how many guys have you done this with and she's like oh I don't know I couldn't even count and I was like well how early did you start and she's like I don't know when I was 13 and I was like who who got you into this who told you like that was good and she's like oh well my parents told me like that's how you find love is like go and have sex with a bunch of different guys and you'll find love that way 
And I just, it, as I was looking at this woman, I was thinking of my friend, Susie, and just thinking, I know poorer people than this because this woman is surrounded by people that are loving her and helping her and she's experiencing a depth of love that my friend Susie has never experienced. And it, yeah, through this experience and going and doing this radical thing, going to India and giving my life over to these people, my heart was breaking open for the people that didn't know that they needed the love of Jesus Christ. And so through that experience, it was just an invitation from God, like, yeah, will you love my people? Um, the gospel today, uh, the 11th week of ordinary time, uh, is yeah, him looking at the crowds and having pity for them uh, and inviting them. The harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. And, and he invites his di disciples to go off on mission. And that is what struck me on my trip to India, uh, was that very passage. Literally, oh my gosh, like th this day, probably, in, in the ordinary time, what, like six, seven years ago, seven years ago now, it just broke my heart open and I said, okay, Jesus, I'll follow you. Well, I said yes because I know that God is real and I know that Jesus is a real person um, and I know that he's desiring relationship with every single person um, and I know who he is and I want everyone else to know who he is um, because a life with him is a life of freedom and joy. Um, He's just the best, and I want that for everyone else, especially college students. Um, yeah, that's why I say yes. Why did I say yes? Um, because everything else in life just didn't seem to have the same purpose. Um, I didn't come from a focus campus, actually. Hey, me, hey. And so <laughs> I just, I think the Lord gifted me with a great faith and a great zeal for mission of like, I just know that this is true, and I want other people to know that this is true. Uh, and I had worked other jobs. I was a hospitality major in college. I did all kinds of internships and I could do them and I was good at them. Um, and it was like fun, but there was still something missing. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, there's something deeper to my purpose of why I was created, of why, what I need to do. So when I had found out about Focus and worked with them in college a little bit, uh, they, I didn't have missionaries though. Uh, I was just kind of like, I, this is it. Like, I, I just want to live my life telling people about how I love Jesus so that they can love Jesus too. So that's why I said yes for it because I was like nothing else in my life will bring me the greatest joy yeah. other than being able to like share the joy that I already have. Ooh, okay um well I did not want to be a focus missionary. I was really impacted by missionaries in college but and so I just kind of went to interview like because they have had such an impact on me and they wanted me to at least consider it. And I was like, not really wanting to do it. I really wanted to just go live mission in a parish and like work full time. But when I was at interview weekend, um, there was a talk about discerning. And one of the pieces of advice that um, Father gave during that talk was, to picture yourself at the end of your life and think back to this decision that you are trying to make and ask yourself, um, like, how is this decision going to affect my life long term? And is this something that I would regret doing or regret not doing? And it became very clear to me when I, when I took out the factors of like the current fears that I had of going into mission, that this was something that one, I just, I wanted, and two, I was very convicted that by doing focus and doing mission full time, that I would be closer to Christ by the end of my life. And at the end of the day, that's the goal of why I'm here, living this life. So it was hard for me to choose anything else after I kind of recognized that that was the invitation I was being given and the choice I was being given so I just yeah I chose to choose Christ and for me that was doing full-time mission with focus it was like just the, the natural choice I like was growing in my desire to tell people about the, the gift that Jesus Christ had been in my life and I was growing in like the ability to do that and the confidence to do that and so I was going into the workforce and I was like oh how am I gonna get mission involved in my job Oh, I could just make mission my job. And I was like, that's exactly what I want to do. Boom. <laughs> so it, like, it was the natural progression of my faith life. It was like, yeah, I want to tell people about this, and I can, I can do that with focus all the time. So it was, 
that's an easy choice. Also, it's like if we say God is everything, then we gotta like start evangelizing, right? And the most important group to evangelize is college students. And we've got this like four or five year period where we're relatable and we're cool to these college kids. So it's like we actually need to like maximize that time because like we can go work in the workforce whenever, but like the age of like 20 to like 25, we're like relatable and we can evangelize the most needed uh, group in the world, which is college students. So it's like we gotta maximize that and then we can do whatever we want after that. I didn't have that sense of community and I was kind of a lone wolf, like trying to live out my faith and grow in it, which didn't work very well. Mm -hmm. And so when Focus came, I was like super receptive to like what they're doing, joined Bible study, joined discipleship, and just immediately saw like how the Lord working in my life just like changed me in such a great way. And so it was just like very natural whenever my team director was like, hey, do you want to go to recruitment weekend? I was like, yes, for sure. I'd love to. I have never felt the amount of peace that I felt when I started considering Focus. Um, the first time I wanted to apply for Focus was actually a year ago, and there was a ton of anxiety about uh, different aspects of it, and I realized like that's not where the Lord was calling my heart right then. Um, and then when I started rediscerning it in December, it kind of just came to mind out of nowhere in prayer, and there was so much peace with it that I just, like there was nothing else that I could have been doing right now. I had a lot of really great friends, and I had great professors. Like my college, uh, my college career was just really fun. But the one thing that I noticed as I went throughout college is that I was always seeking something more. There was always something more that I really wanted to do. Like I, I was like, why? Why do I still feel empty despite having all this stuff in my life that I that I can do? Mm -hmm. And so it really just gave me that opportunity to uh, just look look further and and really like God put on my heart back in October of 2022 like what about focus